Hey, welcome back. Today's video is about velocity spreads for your groups when you're doing load development and some things to think about as you're doing load development and looking at those velocity spreads, trying to determine which load is best. Spoiler alert, it's not what you think. So let's get into it. Before I started, I decided that I had to make some rather large assumptions for this particular video. This is not based on firing data. I did not fire a thousand rounds through a rifle to figure out what the velocity was for each and every shot. I'm using a random number generator instead. The other assumption is that that generation of random numbers is a normal distribution. I use the normal distribution function because my belief is, based on small samples again, that the velocity spreads or the velocities themselves will follow a normal distribution. So we generated 1,000 random velocities with an average of 2,810 and a standard deviation of 5 feet per second. Now this is considered generally a good load for long range shooting. Our data had an average velocity of 2,810.172 feet per second and a standard deviation for the population, which the population standard deviation, the sample standard deviation are different numbers. So we're going to be using population standard deviation here, and we're going to reference the sample standard deviation on all the other numbers, because this is our population of shots. The population standard deviation was 5.25 feet per second, really close to what we were looking for. And obviously the random number generator is generating based on a sample calculation. No big deal. We got good data to work with. By the way, the ES on the totality of the data was 37 feet per second, ranging from 2829 down to 2792 feet per second. If you see me looking down, I have a whiteboard down here so I can have all these numbers because I can't keep them in my head. I'm not quite that smart. Let's start breaking this up into sample sizes because sampling is what we do with a chronograph when we're shooting. And I've been guilty of this. You've seen it in my videos. I've tried to demonstrate this by hinting at it instead of just coming out and saying it in the past. So I'm saying it now. Here we go. Three shot groups. This is what I use to develop for powder charge and for seating depth initially. I then check it at range with a 20 shot series on target and usually more than one. What you see on YouTube and on Patreon is me using three shot groups and looking at the velocity spreads for those. So let's take a look at what those numbers would look like if we just started pulling every three shots in sequence out of this random set of numbers. So pulling those out, I see that I have some, well, variation in the numbers. Let's take ES for example. My ES ranged from 28 for the worst three shots to zero for the best three shots. That's quite a spread, isn't it? Let's look at standard deviation instead. Well, it ranged from 15.6 to zero. That's not much help at all, is it? Better yet, the average velocity ranged from 2820.6 down to 2799 even. So trying to make estimates of what your velocity spreads are from a three shot group, I'm gonna say looks fruitless at this point. But let's go to a little bigger sample because some people shoot five shot groups. I do on occasion. Five shot groups, looking at the velocities, our ES now ranges from 28 down to two. Now this ES is not gonna get any better on the worst one. And it's not gonna get any better on the smallest one either because we're taking more and more numbers. Remember there's 37 in here somewhere. It's just whether we're gonna catch those highest and lowest in a sample size. So 28 to two. All right, standard deviation is starting to narrow up from 11.78 down to 0 0.7. It's a little more realistic maybe, but it's not very good. Now the average velocity did come in a little bit. The, the high average velocity was 2,817 and the low was 2,801. Once again, not really telling. I mean, we're looking at a big wide swath here, 16 feet a second. Is it in tune or out? We can't tell if we're using velocity to figure it out. All right, let's go to the old standard, which is a 10 shot group. You know, 10 shots has been used for as long as I can remember, especially in the old days when components weren't so scarce and people weren't so worried about money. So let's take a 10 shot sample out of this, or actually take 
a lot of 10-shot samples out of it, as many as we can get out of a thousand shots. The ES ranged now from 28 down to 6. The ES on the bottom is starting to come up because we're getting bigger samples, but it's still pretty broad range. I mean, 22 feet a second? Are you comfortable with 28? No? What about 6? If you just shot one 10-shot sample, you could have gotten either one or anything in between. That doesn't sound like low development with any kind of objectiveness to me, but let's keep going. Standard deviation started to narrow up a lot more. Now your standard deviation goes from 8.9 down to 2.2. Now starting to squeeze that standard deviation down just a little bit. The average velocity ranged from 2814 to 2804. We're starting to see that average velocity come together. The average velocity is starting to get closer to, to what the average should be. Let's go shoot a relay of F class, 20 shots. We're gonna discount the ciders and just shoot 20 shots. This has to tell us the truth, right? Maximum ES, 30. Minimum ES, 10. For 20 shots. Now, the standard deviation narrowed some more. The high standard deviation was 7.5 and the low was 2.8. Once again, it's narrowing up. Standard deviation seems to narrow more as we get into bigger samples, and the ES tends to grow as we get into bigger samples. Keep thinking back there. We're almost to the end. Okay, the average velocity ranged from 2,813 down to 2,806 for 20 shot samples. So we're looking at a situation where the larger the sample, the more significant the data that we receive from it. But what do we look at from this data? Well, here's the controversial part. This is my opinion and my opinion alone. You better sit down. Quit looking at your velocity spreads. I mean, honestly, quit looking at them. Look at what the bullets are doing to the target. That's all that really matters. It doesn't matter if your ES is 30 or 3. Because your sampling plan cannot tell the difference between a good load and a bad load in reality on any small sample size basis. Now, if we were to see that our average over several ES samples was low, for instance, we had 10 20 shot samples and they were all down around 10 to 12, we would see that we had a better load but we'd also see our standard deviation low. So how do we tell a good load from a bad load with velocity? Honestly, we can't. That's the truth of the matter. And I've fallen into this trap repeatedly on this channel. I did it on purpose. I chased the wrong load that I knew was the wrong load because it had the best velocity spreads because that's what people want to see. Well, we're not doing that anymore. I'm just going to show you the truth. The truth is velocity doesn't mean much when you get right down to it. And that also means that yes, those velocity flat spots mean absolutely nothing, especially when we start seeing them in small sample sizes. Try this, do that velocity flat spot test, except shoot 10 shots of every load and see what your velocity graph looks like. I bet it's just a climbing line because I've done it and that's what mine looked like. The advice here is to quit chasing your tail on velocity and just look at what the bullets do to the target. As a matter of fact, the only reason you need a chronograph is to determine what your velocity is so that you can calculate your ballistics. That's all there is for this one. Until next time, ignore your ES and SD more and focus on what the bullets do when they arrive at the far end. And I'll see you in the next video.